Church, how we doing today? Woo! I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place, man. You guys look like you're ready to go. Ready to go. Hey, I just want you to, why don't we all rise to our feet real quick. Put your hands together and welcome in our Celebration Everywhere audience. They're all tuning in from all over the planet. And I think I might even see Pastor Tim and Pastor Jen on there. Hi, you guys. We love you. Love you. We're so glad that you're out with Zoe Church. We know you're a blessing out there. Let's go ahead and get out our Bibles. Why don't you turn over to Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to give you two passages today of Scripture. I'm going to pull apart some meat in the Scripture today. I hope, I hope you're ready for that. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 12, and then we're going to look at Matthew 28. And I'm going to bring it all together with a message that I hope blesses you today. But uh, as you're flipping there... Uh, I'll let you get there on your phones. I do want to thank Pastor Tim and Pastor Jen for the opportunity, uh, not, just, not just to preach, but um, to pastor, to shepherd here in our, our church family, in our church community. Pastor Tim, Pastor Jen, they love us so much. Love you guys. Uh, they love uh, the staff. They love me and my, my wife, my kids. They love my family. And uh, there's no place on earth I would rather be than to be planted in this house, in this time, in this season. Y'all, I've been on staff here 15 years. I am more excited about the next 15 years than I've ever been in 15 years on staff here. I'm telling you, man, God is doing something special here. The future is bright, and uh, we just thank you that uh, Jesus is the shepherd. Then you got Pastor Tim and Pastor Jen, and then you got, like, us. And uh, we're here to serve. It's such a privilege and a pleasure. So uh, let me just kind of set up our time together here. I want to speak to you today if you're... Um, I thought like this would apply to everybody for sure. It'll apply to everyone. We'll get you there by the end. But maybe you're in a season today where the voice of God seems a little distant. Come on, we all go through those seasons as, as believers. Whether you're far from God, you might be tuning in today online or in the room today, and you know that you need to get right with God. And don't worry, you're going to have a chance to do that today. You might need to reset things completely. You might need to receive it. Maybe for the very first time, like make a decision, I'm going to do things God's way. Maybe for the first time. But I think in a room like this, there's probably a lot of believers. It's a church service, right? The church gathered together. All God's people gathered together in a room to worship Him and get a little taste of heaven. Come on, we're on a journey. We're going to get there one day. In the meantime, we have sanctuary right here. We can get together and worship God and His presence. But uh, I get these, these seasons sometimes, and I'm pretty sure probably you do too, where maybe the voice of God seems like it's a little soft or distant. You know, times when the presence of God, it, there are times when it's tangible and, and powerful, and you're like, I'm so sure that God is real. And then there are other times where you're like, where did he go? Where is God in this, in this suffering and the season that I'm in? Or where is God? I, I trusted him and things turned out way different than I expected. Where did God go? I, I want to just share with you in the scriptures today just to, something that I think will really help you in those seasons. It'll help you through those seasons. I've been following Jesus almost 30 years. Unbelievable. Following Jesus almost 30 years. This, this message that I'm about to deliver, deliver to you today, like this has been a, like a life message for me. It's carried me through those seasons of life. And it's helped me a lot in those seasons where God seems distant, and I hope it helps you today. Let me read these scriptures. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Don't worry, these may seem kind of, you might be, where's he going with this? Don't worry, just hang with me, bear with me, I promise. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, go, everyone say go. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Come on, go. Leave your kindred, your father's house, your country, all the things that are comfortable, all the things that are familiar. Go to the land that I will show you. Not the land that you have all mapped out and figured out, but don't worry. I'll show you once you go. Woo. Verse 2 says, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Notice this. It's not just, hey man, I'm going to bless you. It's all about you. I'm going to bless you. I'll bless you, bless you. Make it comfortable for you wherever you go. No. He says, the reason that I'm sending you is so that you will be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's ultimately God's goal in all of creation and all these things. He's on a mission to bless all the nations. To bless all the nations. It's the heart of God to be a blessing. Not just to church folk, but to everybody. He's after us all. Amen? Come on, let me tie it together with Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore. Everybody say, go. 
go and make disciples of all nations. There it is again. Not just, you're a disciple, I'm here to bless you. No, go and make disciples of all nations. God's heart for the nations. We see it in the Old Testament and the New. His heart for the nations, all people. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. For the next few moments, I want to share with you uh, this about the mission of God. The scripture is replete from start to finish about the mission of God. And I've titled this message, On a Mission. You ready to go on a mission, Celebration Church? Come on, let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you. You're exalted in this place. We love you. We worship you. Our hearts and our minds, our energy, our strength is all turned towards you in this moment, God. As you open up our hearts to, to understand the scriptures, God, help us to see our, our part in the story and how we fit into your mission, God, and how we can begin to maybe even hear your voice, some for the first time or maybe some where the love of God has grown a little bit cold. God, may our hearts be kindled with fire again today as our hearts begin to beat for the things that your heart beats for. God, we love you, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat, church. I want to ask you this question here. Um, you know what I'm saying when I say on a mission? Has anybody ever heard that? I know we got some people tuning in from all over the world. It's, it's kind of an American phrase, I guess, maybe, just to explain it. You ever been on a mission? You ever been on a mission? I'm a surfer. We used to go on like... So we used to go on like trips where we're on a mission to go find some waves, right? We're like on a mission. We won't stop until we're getting shacked. We're in the barrel. We're in the tube. We can go on planes, trains, and automobiles into the wilderness and find some waves. We're on a surf mission. We're on a mission. I'm going to tell you a story about real, just real quick about, uh, uh, about a time I was in New York with my wife. And uh, I, I'm, I'm the guy, man, that schedules every minute of my vacations. Anybody? Who are the people that love to just wing it once you get there? Yeah, you're not going to like this. But uh, I, I schedule my vacations like in the morning we'll do this, in the afternoons we'll do this, and in the evening we'll do this. Because we have three days in New York City. How many of you know that's not enough time to do it all? So, man, I've got a schedule. Okay, here are the things. We're going to make our list, and we're going to whittle it down and prioritize X, Y, Z. We're going to do X, Y, Z on each day. And so uh, my wife loves me, man. I promise she loves me. But um, we're at the top of 30 Rock, Rockefeller Center, right? Because that was on our list for the morning. Afternoon, we're going to go see the USS Intrepid Museum, right? We're going to go see the, the museum there, and I'm going to get my picture, like, jumping off the edge, like Nick Cage, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nobody got that, man, uh, jumping off the side, seeking the Declaration of Independence. But uh, I, I have my reasons for going to see the USS Intrepid, right? But uh, it's, it's about six blocks, but they're long blocks there. You know, you're going toward the Hudson River. It's six long blocks, but I'm like, oh man, we got this. We can make this. We have about three hours to do it. We got this. We're going to get there. We get down the elevator, down to ground level. We start walking. And you guys know, I don't know if you can see this online, but like I'm, I'm a tall guy. I'm like 6'6". Six, six. I, I think I'm shrinking now. I'm, I'm 51. I'm 6'5 now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I'm, I'm all, mostly legs. I don't know if you've noticed that. I'm mostly legs. And I'll tell you what, when I start walking at a clip, when I'm in a hurry, when I'm on a mission, whoo, man, I'll just start I'm, I'm focused on where I'm going. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm, I'm walking, but I look over after a while. We're going dodging on the city streets. We're trying to get out to the Hudson River, trying to get to that museum. And uh, I look back, man, my, my wife is like running next to me, literally like jogging next to me, jogging next to me. My wife's not short. She's 5'6", but when you're 6'6", you're six, six, man, and you're mostly legs, man, I'm just on a clip. I am on a mission. I'm cruising through the streets of New York on a mission to get there to my destination. And my wife finally shouts out, man. She's out like, come on, you got me on this death march through New York City, man. This is a death, death march with your gazelle-like legs. You've got to stop. And hence is the origin story in our family of the gazelle-like death march. We, say, we use that phrase a lot because my daughters are also six-footers and they're all legs. And as we, we start moving at a clip, you know what I'm saying? Mama's jogging next to us, you know. <laughs> it's fantastic. We're on a mission. We're on a mission. We're going somewhere. We got something to do. We got something that we got to accomplish. When I get on a mission, man, nothing can stop me. You ever been there? You're like really focused. You're, you're narrowed in. You're focused on what you're doing. I'm here to share with you today how God is on a mission. Amen? God is on a mission. He has a singular focus he's never been distracted from. A singular focus throughout 
human history, a singular focus from before time began to its end. He has a singular focus. God has a mission. He's never been distracted. And it's fundamental for us as believers to know what that mission is. Wouldn't you agree? Like if you're a Christian and you don't know what the mission of God is, you're in trouble. You're like, what am I supposed to be doing here? I don't know. Man, if, but if you know the mission of God, now you can align yourself with the mission of God. And instead of asking God to come and bless your work, you can get involved with his where he's already doing the hard work, where he's already moving his message forward, where he's on a mission, man. I was on the banks of the uh, St. John's River the other day, just out toward the end, man, the water's flowing. It was flood tide just pouring out of the river. I don't know, millions, billions of gallons just flowing. I was thinking about like, if you, if you kind of cut it, if I got a shovel and dug a little channel over to me and stepped into it, I'd kind of technically be in the St. John's River, you know? But if I jump in that river with the billions of gallons flowing and maybe, I don't know, eight knots down the, man, if I jump in there, man, I'm going to be in the middle of what that river's up to. It's hard to fight against that. It's gonna carry me through all the way to the sea because that's what it's doing and I can't fight long against it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be carried along, right? That's how I wanna live my life for Jesus. I don't wanna like dig a little trench to bring a little Jesus over here to me. Anybody else, man, you're just like, hey, Jesus, I wanna put my foot in the water, you know, man. Oh, I'm a Christian. Woo. It's great, man. It's great. Awesome. I'm a great part, man. I'm that guy. I'm like belly flop, like all in. That's me. I want to invite you into God's mission today. I want to invite you into God's mission. And what is that mission? The mission of God runs the entire span of the Bible. It runs the entire span of the Bible. So are you ready? Maybe you're new around here. You don't know Jesus. No problem, man. I'm going to summarize the entire scripture for you in just a couple minutes. You're like, man, are you sure? I'm going to get to Cracker Barrel after this. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Bear with me. So we see in the beginning, Genesis. The Bible is, the Bible is, an, incredible, is an incredible collection of books, right? 66 books. The, the authors lived all over the planet in different times, different millennia, but they speak one message. They speak about the mission of God, right? These, the Bible is written from different people in different backgrounds. Uh, it comes to us throughout the ages. It comes to us first through oral tradition where it was passed on through oral tradition and eventually technology of like papyrus and, and scrolls and eventually books and then the printing press and education made it easy for all of us to get a hold of God's word and now it's, it's like on our phones, you know what I'm saying? My, my kids, I don't know if they've ever cracked open their paper Bible, but they're, the Bible's on their phones now, you know what I'm saying? They, they live by the word of God that's on their phones. I guarantee, man, there's only about three or four of you brought a paper Bible to church today. Anybody? Hold it up. Couple of old school guys, yeah, all right. Oh, look at this, oh man, I'm so happy. Technology, oh my gosh. There's a, a fantastic technology called the book that you hold in your hand, right? Now technology, man, I'm up here with my iPad with the word of God on it. I've got my phone with the word of God on it. It carries it with me, carry it with me everywhere I go. But uh, the message of God, the mission of God, it finds its way to us. And uh, the story has never changed. And in chapters one and two of the very first, in the beginning, God created, right? The first Two chapters, we see that God creates a place to dwell with his people. He, there's something about God. He wants family. He wants family. He's fully sufficient. He's just fine on his own. He's not lonely. He's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, they're having a party. It's all them together, right? But like, he wants family. And so he creates a place, like a temple, like a place where his glory can preside, called the earth. In all of creation, he creates everything and he creates the earth where his glory will dwell. He puts human beings that are made in his image. Amazing, the fish, the birds, not made in his image. They're alive, but not made in his image. He puts these human beings that are made in the image of God and they're there to steward the land and to uh, tend to it and to take dominion over things. If you're a surfer like sharks and stingrays, you take dominion over those things and go surfing. So he makes this place where his glory can dwell with his people and it's his original intent. He always just wants to be with you and me us. He wants to be with us. I love that verse that says he just, they just walk with God in the garden in the cool of the day. Oh my gosh, the cool and refreshing garden of God. Doesn't that sound good? That's the original intent. Chapter three, all goes south. It all goes south. Mankind chooses that they don't trust God and they want to be God themselves, make their own decisions and everything's thrown off track. And we see that the punishment for that is a separation from God. They can no longer be in the presence of God because God is holy and now they are not. From that point forward, God says, one day I'm going to take care of all of this so that we can be together again. Amen? So 
The next few chapters we see through verse 11, we see that mankind is off the rails, completely unhinged. They are on a mission to destroy each other and destroy themselves and destroy the earth. God has to wipe them all off the face of the earth at one point. Starts over through one family, one man named Noah. We see that everything is evil all the time and men men are constantly uh, running from God and fighting with God and fighting with each other. And then we end up here in chapter 12 and everything turns. Did you know that this is one of the most important chapters in the entire canon of scripture is Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three, because it represents a time man is trying to create their own religion all the way up to here and trying to be God and trying to be the ones that steward their own lives and their own outcomes and have their own mission separate from God. And God steps in in verse 12 and he says exactly what we just read. He chooses Abram, not a guy who is religious and pious. Most scholars think that he was pagan and that he was rich and he was uh, privileged. He He had like all kinds of land at the time. He was very successful and wealthy. He was fine just where he is. And then God sends him on a mission. God says, I want you to go. Leave what's comfortable and I want you to go to the land that I will show you. I'm not even gonna show you all the details. I'm not gonna show you all the details and tell you all the answers on the front end. I just want you to go by faith, by faith. And guess what Abram does? He steps out in faith and he follows God. And in this, we see all the way now through the entire canon of scripture, all of scripture, all the way to the end, to revelation. It becomes a relationship by grace, through faith with God. That's what he's after. He's gonna restore everything, but it's gonna be by faith, through faith faith. Something is released in Abram. We can't understand it fully, but we experience it ourselves. Amen. You and I experience faith ourselves. If you, you see the mission of God all the way through to the end in Revelation, we see the end of the mission at the end of the book, Revelation 22. We see the new Jerusalem, the new city where God's presence is with his people. My favorite thing about the new city, they don't even need light there, my friend. Don't even need light because the glory of the presence of the Lord is the light of that city. And all of death, hell, and the grave, and all the suffering, and everything's been rolled up like a scroll and thrown into the pit with the enemy where it came from. All of it has been separated and purged, and all the rebellion, all of it's been handled and taken care of and sent to where it belongs. And it's just you and me, friend, all of us together, multitudes and multitudes, millions and billions of believers who since the time of Abram by faith have trusted God all the way through to the end. All of us are there with him forever, singing just like we sang today. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh man, I'm telling you. Woo! It's gonna be, man, we just get a little taste of it here on Sundays. Just a little taste of heaven. We need it, right? We need it sometimes, a little taste of heaven. We know where we're going. We're on a mission. We're gonna get there eventually. We need it at least every seven days. We just need some time in his presence. We leave our troubles at the door and we come in here into God's house and we we love him and we love the people next to us and we're, we're so happy for what he's doing in us and through us, amen? Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, just a little taste to have, taste of the mission of God. That's what we get here on Sundays. Just a little taste of what it's gonna be like when the mission is complete. Amen? So I'm telling you right now, how does this apply to me? Well, let's skip back from the end. Let's get back to that verse from Matthew. Let's, let's look to the time when Jesus comes to earth. God's on a mission. He's taken us from where we were to where we're going. And we, we, we enter the story here at Matthew 28. Jesus has come to earth. The fullness of God dwells inside of him. He lives a perfect and sinless life, walks the earth. Uh, he's faced by temptations and trials just like you and I are. He faces uh, difficult situations, emotions, loss of loved ones, family, friends, betrayal. He's falsely accused. He experiences a lot of the pain and the suffering that you and I experience in this life. And yet in through all of it, he's sinless. He's sinless. He stays pure in his thoughts, no matter how hard it is, right? And he lives this perfect life, and then he's crucified, wrongly accused and crucified, dies on the cross. He's buried in the ground for three days, and then we know that ain't the end of the story. Am I right? Come on, on the third day, God raises him from the dead by the same power that's alive and active in you and in me, man, raised Christ from the dead. The power of God, he's raised from the dead. And in that, he defeats death, hell, and the grave. He defeats death, hell, and the grave. He says, this is my mission. He says, mission accomplished. Woo! Now, now that I've done it, he says, all authority on heaven and earth is given to me. Right? All authority. 
I'm a fundamental guy. I know this. I preach this message a lot. If we get this fundamental right, I'm telling you, it's going to help you. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Here's what I want you to do as a result to complete the mission. I want you to go, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What does he want to do? He has a commission. He has a mission. He says, this is my mission, and I want you to participate in my mission with me. I'm empowering you. You're not going on your own. I'm empowering you. I'm going to give you full power. My authority, I give it to you. You go in my name, and I want you to make disciples of all nations. What is this? He's trying to, he's trying to reintroduce the creation to its creator. Think about this, man. If I'm the creation and I, I don't know who my creator is, I'm lost. I'm lost. If, if I don't know that I have a father, I'm an orphan. It's difficult if you don't know, if you don't have a father who loves you and cares for you. Think about how that is about a heavenly father who created you. I don't know who created me. I don't know what I'm here for. I don't know. I'm going to make up my own mission. I'm going to go on my own mission. That's what a lot of us do. But when we receive Jesus, it's a lot harder to make him your Lord than your Savior. Amen. I want to get right with God and get saved. That's great. Okay, now let me be your Lord. Exchange your mission for mine. Take up my mission. My mission is this. It's real simple right here in this passage. It's right here in this passage. I'm going to get going, baptizing, and teaching. This is how we participate in the mission of God while we have the baton, church. This is, this is what God has called us to do. Now, I know every single one of you here in this room has a unique life, a unique experience, a unique skill set, a unique gifting. Every one of you is wired in a, a unique and powerfully awesome way that God can tap into you and he can do great things in the sphere of influence that you have. But ultimately, the big picture, we all need to know that it's not my mission. I'm not inviting God into my mission just dig a channel over here to my mission and yes, all right, I'm gonna be a surfer for Jesus. Right? We're not inviting him into our mission. We're going head first, catapulting ourselves into his. Are you with me? Are you with me? And that's how we do it, man. We go, we baptize, and we make disciples. And the, to bring it back to my original contention, when we find our meaning in this mission, it changes everything. I would submit to you today that the times that I felt distant from God and when God's voice seems to have gone quiet is that God's mission's over here. And I've drifted maybe somewhere over here. Doesn't mean he doesn't love me. He's always with me. Never leaves me or forsakes me, right? We know that from the scripture. That's true. Like once you've received the Jesus, made him your Lord and Savior, received the Holy Spirit, he don't leave you. He never abandons you. You're not an orphan anymore. Your heavenly father, you know who he is. But man, the mission can be over there. But you can get so wrapped up in your mission over here on this side that you aren't in the river anymore. I want to invite you back into the river today. I want to invite you back into the river. It's flowing. The river of God is flowing and moving. The mission of God is flowing and moving. And it's so easy now. Like I said, three decades almost of following Jesus, it's, it looks different today than it did in the 90s. The river of God is constantly moving. The mission of God is constantly moving. And if you you take some time off from it and you step back from it, the water keeps going, right? It keeps on flowing. And it's always, though, the opportunity to jump back in. I want to invite you to do it today. It might just be that thing that rekindles your spirit that re-energizes you and, and, and gets your eyes off of your circumstances and gets your eyes onto the Lord. When you know that the mission of God is carrying you along and you have nothing to be afraid of. Amen? Amen. Here's how we do it. We witness. We welcome. We witness. We welcome. And we walk alongside. That's how I would say it. Go, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Come on, I'm I'm tipping my hand to you here a little bit. This is where I'm going with this whole thing. We witness, we welcome people into the kingdom of God, and we walk alongside people as they grow in their faith. 
This is what we do. When we're doing this, we are accomplishing the work of God. We are accomplishing the mission of God in our generation when we do these things. First, we witness, right? When we witness, Abram, leave what is comfortable you, to you and by faith do what I've asked you to do and through you I will bless the nations of the earth. We've got to go and we've got to witness to people who do not yet know Jesus. This is not just preacher's jobs. It's all y'all. Oh, yeah. Every single one of us has the opportunity to witness and to be an example of Christ and the Holy Spirit living in us. In every sphere of influence, we witness. Jesus said it this way just before, even in the ascension, he said this, that you will receive power. Everybody say power. It's Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You will be my witness. You will be the, the evidence of life change. You'll be the one who reveals, God will reveal through you. He'll reveal his mission. He will reveal his kingdom through you, wherever you are, wherever you work, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a preacher, whether you're a teacher, whether you're young, whether you're old, no matter it is what you do, he will reveal the world, his, his mission through you in the world. And I'm telling you right now, the, um, the thing that I, I, has really shaped me that I've noticed where people miss the mission is in, there's a certain revelation that in this room, I'm pretty sure most of you have, but there's a revelation that you get when you, you become aware of God's love. You become aware of the truth of God. You become aware of the gap between you and God. I'll never forget, I got saved as an adult. I was 23, I got saved. Um, I, I just got, I started being drawn to the scripture. I can't explain it. I, I know it was God and my mom was praying for me, but I, I know that. But I, suddenly I, I started being drawn to the scripture and I was reading for a while, about eight months in to reading. I'd read about a thousand pages of the Bible. I was seeking, my, my cousin had gotten saved. He was in college at the time. He had gotten, he'd given his life to the Lord and he came to visit me to tell me the gospel, to share the gospel with me. He got there and I was low hanging fruit, friend. I was low hanging fruit. I'm like, I wanna get saved. I wanna live for God. I don't know what to do. I'm just reading the Bible. I don't, I don't have any clue what to do next. What do I do? He's like, be baptized. Get baptized. That's, what, that's, what, that's the next step. Now that you've had this, you want to give your life to Jesus? Be baptized. We went down to the ocean. And I'll never forget, you know, he, he prayed. And then, and then uh, I'll never forget the moment of like standing there in the ocean and looking out and the revelation hit me. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like the revelation. I've been seeking, I've been reading, I really wanted to know God, I wanted to surrender my life to God. The revelation hit me of all I'd been saved from. All the times I should have been dead in a ditch, all the times I shouldn't have made it, overdose, uh, car wreck, drunk driving, like all the times he delivered me through it. Like I remembered every one of them. It's like they all flashed before my eyes. Like I can, all the times. And he was with me. He showed me, I was with you. I was carrying you along. The prayers of your family were carrying you. I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm just this new guy, surfer guy, man. Barbell earrings, gnarly hair, you know, wore a shirt sleeve on my head. You know, I was just going crazy. I'm like, man, what it, and, I, and then he showed me. He showed me what he spared me from, death and hell. In the grave, in eternity separated from him, he showed me. He showed me all I'd been saved from. I saw him just start crying, just start blubbering, you know, man, what do you do? And he realized that he's like, I saved you for a purpose, son. I saved you. First time I ever spoke out loud to God, I heard him speak to me, I saved you, son. And, and I, I spoke out loud to him for the first time and said, God, I've been running from you, and I'm so sorry. God, as radical as I've ever been for anything in my life, I'm gonna be a million times more radical for you for the rest of my life. Amen. And I went under the water and I came back up. And I'll never forget that feeling. Oh man, you ever felt that? Anybody? Can I get a witness? Somebody felt what I'm feeling? Where you realize what God saved you from and you respond by faith and you go under the water and come back up. Man, God, I trust you. And all of a sudden, everything's brand new. It's the scales fall off your eyes. You see new colors and you smell new smells. I don't know how to describe it. It was the craziest thing I ever experienced. This is how we witness. We tell people about what God's done for us. That's it. And not just when you have a microphone in your hand, right? You do it at work. Come on, you do this and you do this at school. 
Come on, Sarah, you do this on the street, right? She's a street evangelist right here on the front row. I know Sarah, man, she went street evangelist yesterday. She was leading people to Jesus in a park yesterday. I'm telling you, man, we take as witnesses the gospel of Jesus out. We can't keep it in here. What happens in here is really kind of for us. Get that taste of heaven, God's mission complete, and we've arrived at our destination. That's, the, that's for us here. Man, but in the meantime, go. In the meantime, go. In the meantime, go. You're on a mission, friends. We're on God's mission together. Church family, we're on God's mission together. Ooh, he might call you to open up your mouth and say some things at a time where you're not so sure. Is that really you, God? Did I really hear you say that? Oh, man, you better step out into that mission of God when that moment comes. Nobody can make you do it. You do it by faith, willingly, because you love God. He's changed your life. I'm telling you, man, when you respond to God, I'm telling you, ooh, all of a sudden, God's voice isn't so quiet anymore. When you start responding, you're like intentional about it. I'm going to be on mission with God. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to testify to the very goodness of God everywhere I go. Oh, man, when you tell people about, hey, man, I want you to come to church with me. If you've been seeking God, man, we're going to baptize you. We're going to baptize you. I said, what? Baptize? Yeah, Jesus got baptized. Awesome. I will too. That's what I said to my cousin. He's like, how, did I, how do you know baptism will work? He's like, Jesus got baptized. I said, okay, sounds good. Man, I'm telling you, witness welcome. That's the baptism part, welcoming people into the kingdom of God. Man, Brian Detweiler, you and that team out there baptizing people. I'm telling you, man, hey, instead of going out of Cracker Barrel so fast this morning, why don't you stop and watch Brian and his team baptizing some people out there. Welcome them into the kingdom of God. Put your hands together. What if there's somebody in their seat next to you that gets saved today? You know what you need to do? You need to walk with them out of that baptism pool. Hey, man, come on. Let's go out and get wet. Oh, yeah, let's get in the baptism pool. Here's water, why not? Come on, we got shirts, we got clothes, no problem. We got towels, we'll take good care of you. Come on, let's make that jump from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of our God. Get on God's mission. Woo, we ready to get in the waters? Fine. Oh, my gosh. But that's not where it stops. That's just the, that's the starting line. Baptism is the starting line of our faith, amen? It is the starting line, not the finish line. Don't think you've arrived now that you got baptized, you're saved. Good, I'm good, check it off the list. No, man, the mission of God is flowing. Man, it's time to jump on in. It's time to jump on in, and that's what we do, we teach people. Jesus, this is Jesus teaching us. Jesus says this. This isn't like, oh, let's, try, let's uh, research that with, uh, you know, cross-reference it with the Apostle Paul's teaching and see if it's really what it means. No, Jesus says, hey, man, I want you to teach other people everything that I've commanded you, and surely I will be with you always. Teach. And guess what? That's not just for pastors and preachers. Our group leaders do this. Our serving team members do this. Come on, where's my freedom leaders? Freedom leaders, come on, man. Our freedom leaders do this. This is for all of us. This is what maturity in the body of Christ looks like, friends, is that now we take what God's given us and we teach it to others. That's it. It's not, it's not like, oh, man, once I'm mature, I can just take a little vacation. Woo, take a little break, get the feet up, kick back and relax. I'm so saved. Oh, I'm so saved. I'm so happy. Oh, everything's so good in my life. I'm telling you, man, if you are not able to teach, learn. Don't avoid it and leave it to outsource it to the professionals, learn. Every one of us, I look at it this way, once you're saved, you're like five minutes ahead of the next person. You got something, you can teach them. You get a little bit of Bible inside of you, you can teach it to somebody else. You have a testimony you can share from the beginning, but then as you learn things about God, man, share those things with others. This is what it's like to teach people what God has asked us to do. John 14, 21, one of my favorites from Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them, they are the ones who love me. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Celebration Church, do you love Jesus? Man, we accept his commands, we obey them. Because we love him, because we love Jesus, our Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Man, isn't that funny? As people learn the commandments of God, we, we try to like, I think dumb it down sometimes as believers, like, oh yeah, it's easy, man, just get saved and then God will work it all out. There's a work to do. There's a mission of God. Everybody say, I'm on a mission. On a mission. We're, we're baptized and saved so that we can be on a mission with God. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. And if you take some time off, that's where his voice starts to get kind of quiet. So today, as we close, I just want to invite you. I, I'm, I was praying about how to kind of close this with you guys. 
Um, I like to do ministry at the end, if that's okay. Just a quick time of ministry instead of just, hey, dismiss, go eat lunch. Um, just a quick time of ministry. I promise we won't keep you long. We're just a couple minutes left in service here. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If God is speaking to you, which I've been praying that he would, if God is speaking to you, I want to pray for like three groups of people. The first is a group of people here or even tuning in online. If you're, if you're far from God and you've been running and you're sorry. If you've been running, you, you know you're separated from God. You just know it. In, in here you know it. You don't need nobody to tell you. He's been dealing with you. He, and, and you're ready to come home. You're ready to come home. I'm here to tell you on behalf of Jesus, by the authority and the power of Jesus, his arms are wide open to welcome you this morning. All you gotta do is say yes. All you gotta do is say yes. So with every eye open and no heads bowed. Come on, man. I'm telling you right now, this is the place to do this. There's no place better than this because you're about to get a standing ovation in this place. If you, if you know you need to get right with God today, man, Stand up right now in your seat, wherever you are. Stand up. No, praise God. Praise God. Thank you. God is so fired up. I'm telling you, man. God is moving in your life. Praise God. We're so excited and happy for you. We're so excited and happy. Please remain standing. I'm gonna have some people join you. I'm gonna have some people join. If you felt far from God, you want me to pray for you. If you felt far from God, you want me to pray for you, man? We're gonna believe that God's gonna break that off of you today. Would you stand up? Would you stand up if you want me to pray for you? If God's felt far from you, amen. Come on. Come on, man. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Hey, last group, and this one could be big. I, I want you to stand up. If you know that God's called you to teach and to take what he's implanted in you and share it with the world, if you know it but you've been running from that, stand up. Come on, man, stand up. We need teachers in the body of Christ. We need teachers. We need mature seasoned believers to teach others the commands and the I'm telling you, God's gonna move today. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, God, we love you and we worship you today. Here in your presence, God, transform us today. God, we believe you for it. This isn't just a meeting, God. This is a meeting of the saints. Your presence is here. You're enthroned in the praises of your people. You are the almighty and infinite creator God of the universe. And today, right now, God, we thank you for the, the confession, God, that, that we need you. What an obvious thing, but sometimes we just need to say it. We need you. For those who are coming to Christ for the first time, meet them now in their circumstance. God, lead them to that baptism pool. It's time to make that commitment. It's time to make that declaration that you belong to Jesus and no other. From this point forward, you're gonna follow him with everything you've got for the rest of your days. For those who are weary, God, I pray you'd bring times of refreshing, bring seasons and times of refreshing, God. Help us to know that we're on mission with you. We don't have to carry the load. Your burden is easy, your yoke is light, God. We believe that, God. When we've been trying to do it a little bit in our own strength, we surrender that to you. God, you are the one, you're the flowing river. You're doing all the work. Help us to get into the water. Help us to get into the water. Bring seasons of refreshing and speak clearly to our hearts so we know what to do. And for those who are called to teach, it's no small, it's no small ask. It's no small commitment, God, because it requires that we be in all the way. God, for those who are called to teach, I pray they would jump into your mission and not hold back, God, the areas that need to be refined in them. Thank you for refining them, God. Pull out all the dross, all the impurities so that they can deliver the pure message of the word of God to your people. We need mature believers to rise up in this season, to be able to carry the truths of the word of God into the next generation, God. You let your anointing, we don't preach or teach in our own anointing. We don't preach or teach in our own, uh, our, our own power, God. It's the power that you put inside of us by the Holy Spirit, God. We just receive it. Let your people receive it today. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, a faithful church said amen. Amen and amen.